Hello and welcome to Odds and Ends number 7. In this episode we'll cover the domestication of Yakon, Oka, Aronia, and Hascap. You'll start with Yakon. Yakon is an ancient Andean crop whose scientific name is Smolanthus sonifolius. Yakon is a polyploid species of a possible hybrid origin. Based on the current biology of this domesticated crop, this plant species has infertile seeds and is reliant on asexual propagation by people to propagate this crop. The yakon produces large edible tuberous roots, traditionally consumed as fruits similar to sweet potatoes in appearance, with a juicy and a rare sweet taste, but lacking in starch. The common yakon exists in proximity with four other species closely related to this species, which includes Somophus cybercus, Somophus macrocyphus, and Somophus conanatus, and Somophus cypherfructus. It is likely that the common yakon is derived from at least two of these species. In a study using the wild species of yakon and the cultivated yakon itself, it was discovered that although it is considered a semi-domesticated plant, all the wild species have significantly more pith and fiber in comparison to the domesticated form. The cultivated form can also withstand several days of transport and hold high levels of water and sugar, indicating further domestication than first realized. The species S. cybecus seems to have the most reducing sugar amongst the wild species, indicating that it's one of the parent species, although it's not a sole species since it also has a larger, if not the largest, xylem conductive area of the four species, making it very fibrous and unpalatable for most people. Now on to the next crop. Now on to the next crop, Oka. The species Oka tuberosa is another polyploid North American crop. This species is octoploid, but most of the regular wild species are diploid with only a few wild polyploid forms, and the majority of these close relatives do not produce tubers, indicating that only four species were used in the breeding of this domesticated species. These include the identified species Oxalis pincensis and Oxalis chinsagensis, and two unidentified species labeled Lima wt and Bull wt. The former is found in the Andes in the Lima department, the latter being found in Bolivia. Although Oxalis tuberosa is currently considered one single species, unpublished data from E. Eschenweiler seems to indicate two distinct genetic groups, and traditional growers of Oka have two different names for it. The Wayak cultivars are sweeter in taste and were usually cooked fresh after a few days to sweeten in the sun. The Akaya type is primarily used for processing purposes to make dried tubers that can be stored for long periods of time and are sour in flavor. Genetic analysis using genetic markers indicate two separate domestication events, possibly from different species. And here are the results of this study by Dr. Eve Emschweiler. Based on current genetic evidence, the bull WT species and the lima WT species are in fact distinct species, genetically distinct from both each other and the other two named species, Oxalis pachensis and Oxalis chikensis. The genetic analysis also suggests that the Wayak and Kea type cultivars show distinct domestication histories and possibly different origins for their polyploidy. The speakers of both different languages, Quichia and Ayamara, in the South Americas, likewise distinguish sweet oka from sour oka. It is concluded that both these strains may have different origins and in fact may have been an example of independent domestication and independent polyploidization, although further genetic sampling may be required. Since this species is octoploid and there's no examples of tuber-bearing wild species with octoploid genomes, it is likely that this is an allopolyploid, the hybridization between multiple species. 
it was early suggested that Oxalis pichensis is one of the genome donors to the octopoid Oka, but current results suggest that O. pichensis is the least similar to Oka. It is plausible that intergressive hybridization may have played a role in the development of the species, but as of right now, Oka pichensis is not one of the species. The species, the species Bull W slash T and Oxalis chilgensis are relatively genetically close to each other, as well as Oxalis tuberosa, indicating that these two may have been parents in the crossbreeding process. And Oxalis chilgastensis had the most genetic traits shared with the Wyak Oka samples. And the Bull WT strains are also genetically very similar to Oka further indicating that these two were probably parents in the production of these cultivars of Oka. So as of right now, two of the four candidates, four genome donors to the octoploid species have been found, but the other two candidate species for Oka remain a mystery. Now on to the next crop. Now on to Aronia. Aronia melancarpa, or black chokecherry, or just plain Aronia. It's a species native to North America, along the east coast of Canada and the United States. It was cultivated mostly as an ornamental, but it's popular in medicinal and culinary uses as well, especially in European countries. The first wild species of Aronia were introduced into Europe at the end of the 18th century, when the first breeding program was developed in Scandinavia and Russia. Farm cultivation on industrial scale began in the Alti Mountains, Moscow, and Petersburg. This species is commonly grown as a means of making juices as well as producing health food substances. At present, Aronia is commonly grown in Central, Eastern, and Southern Europe as a backyard crop, and commercial plantains are based on the cultivars Nero and Galjanta. These are high-yielding cultivars with great resistance to harsh conditions found in Russia and other parts of the world. Due to its beautiful leaf color in fall, it's used extensively as an ornamental plant, with the cultivars Viking, Aaron, and Huggin being the most popular forms of this species. In the United States, the cultivars Autumn Magic, Mackenzie, and Morton are the most popular forms of this ornamental plant. Now on to Hascaps. Hascaps belong to the species Laronisa corolia, a species of honeysuckle, native to the northern boreal forests of Asia, Europe, and North America. It is primarily found in low-lying wetlands or high and mountainous areas. The first domestication efforts happened in Russia, starting in 1913 to 1915. The project was then shelved until the 1950s in the Vavilov Institute and the Siberian Horticultural Institute. The first three cultivars of Hascap were developed in the 1980s, bred by the late Dr. Maria M. Plakova, former head of the fruit crops department in the Vavilov Research Institute. Over a 25-year period, several cultivars were bred resulting in the creation of 68 cultivars, or at least 60 of these have been commercially generated and propagated. These cultivars were derived from populations of wild hascap found in the northern parts of Russia, as well as the European parts of Siberia and the Far East. The tetraploid forms of the species were found to be extremely useful for domestication purposes. These were found in the Kuril Islands as well as parts of China and Kazakhstan. The breeding program was made to increase berry size, flavonoid levels, and depth of dormancy. One cultivar Sevast was a maternal parent for many named cultivars, such as Sinyaya, Pizza, or Bluebird, Gobaya, Veriteno, translation light blue or sky blue, Flaca, translation violet, and the cultivar Marina. The cultivars were selected from different regions for different purposes. The strains found in the Kamchiaka Peninsula had high levels of winter hardiness, large fruits, sweet sour taste, 
and high absorbic acid. The has caps of the Corral Islands had deep dormancy of buds, high winter hardiness, large fruits, and late maturing capabilities. The maritime areas within Russia had strains that were early ripening, high yielding, and high in bioactive compounds. The Altai and Sein Mountains had high yield, fruit that wouldn't break, and high levels of drought resistance. And in Northern Europe, there was a deep dormancy and high winter hardness and non shattering traits as well. In Japan, domestication of Haskap began in the 1960s and 1970s by the Hokkaido Prefectural Agriculture Experiment Station and a farmer's co-op in the Chichos region. It was popular in Japan early on, but due to the high cost of labor, it declined, becoming a smaller industry than expected. In Oregon, Dr. Maxine Thompson and Mr. Jim Gilbert began tinkering with the specimens from Japan and Russia to breed new varieties. The University of Saskatchewan obtained many of these parental cultivars used by this breeding program, obtaining 35 Russian cultivars, 70 plus Japanese cultivars, and hundreds of seedlings from Dr. Thompson's breeding program in Oregon, as well as six wild Corel Island types and 600 specimens of wild hascap found in the boreal forest of Canada obtained approximately 8,000 seedlings from controlled crosses in 2008. In 2007, Canada released its first cultivars, Borealis and Tundra, bred from Russian cultivars. Well, that all covers everything. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this video. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to me on BitChute for a greater variety of content, four videos a week. And thank you to all my subscribers on both platforms. I appreciate it.